uh, very much, Mr. Speaker. And let me uh, state from the outset that I stand to oppose and to oppose vehemently uh, this bill. The Speaker, I have been here long enough now, and I can tell you, this is the first time we have come across a bill proposed by the regime in power, a bill that is totally insensitive to the plight of the people. The Speaker, how deceitful can we be? How can you go around the country promising hapless Kenyans, poor Kenyans, heaven, and yet six, seven months down the road, you come up with a bill that essentially seeks to choke them to death? The Speaker, how, does it, how, how can it be possible on earth, the Speaker, that a government can forget about the people, the very people it's supposed to protect, and turn around to actually kill them, literally, the Speaker. The Speaker, it is also the first time that I've witnessed a situation where a bill is being introduced in this house, and somebody, a head of a political party, which is in power, issuing threats, open threats to members of parliament, that unless you vote in this direction, you will see. That unless you vote for this bill, you will be in problem. That unless you draw the line, you will know who I am. Mr. Speaker, in which country are we living? Mr. Speaker, if this is not dictatorship, what then is dictatorship? Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, going through this bill, Mr. Speaker, what is that There's on? There's a point of order from uh, your colleague. Honorable Speaker, is it in order for the minority leader to mislead the House that His Excellency the President has said that if you do not pass the bill, you'll know who I am? Can he be able to substantiate God, those Honorable claims, Honorable Speaker? At no time did he mention it is the actually President. Tinker that said that, Honorable Speaker. Order, Honorable Members. Avoid unhelpful insinuations. The Honorable Minority Leader at no time mentioned the President. He probably is meaning Ichungu or somebody else. Let him continue with his argument. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, as usual, I will ignore the Honorable Soro. Mr. Speaker, going through this bill, you see an attempt to not only ridicule the hustlers or the poor Kenyans, but to actually kill them. Why do I say so? The Speaker, we all know that this country lies solely on fuel and petroleum products. Every facet of the economy is driven by fuel and petroleum products. And therefore, the moment you set out increase VAT, on fuel and petroleum products from 8 to 16 percent, you essentially mean that life, the cost of living, is going to skyrocket automatically. Everything in life is going to become more costly, Mr. Speaker. And then you go ahead and remove tax on aircraft, choppers, and spare parts for those funny items. Equipment that are only bought or accessed by the who is who, by the very rich in this country. On the one hand, you overburden the poor person. On the other hand, you lessen the burden on the rich person. So what logic is this, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, I would have expected, I would have expected, having heard the regime lament that they found empty coffers, I would have expected, and any first-year economic student will tell you that the logical step the regime should have taken was rationalize the budget, rationalize the budget, and cut off those areas that are not necessary. But what do you see? The budget has now increased by about eight something billion shillings over and above last year's budget. But the increment is driven by consumption. You see the money allocated to the office of the president the money allocated to the office of the deputy president, the money allocated to the office of the deputy of what? Prime's cabinet, whatever. 
monies that are going to service consumption, to host banquets, to buy flowers, to buy tea. Mr. Speaker, this is a perfect case of a regime which is living on a different universe, not on Earth, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you can go on and on. Take the case of the housing levy. <coughs> Up to now, including, and I let it very clearly to my good friend, Honorable Kimani Kuria. Up to now, they have refused to define what this animal is. We do not know whether it is a levy, it is a tax, it is a, it is, it is a fine, it is a penalty. No one, nobody knows, the speaker. And then they come here and want to tell us that they have reduced it from 3% to 1.5%. The speaker, they have even worsened the situation now. The situation has now worsened. Because the cap which was there initially, of 2,500 has been removed. Now they have targeted even those who are earning bigger salaries more. Now they have attacked the low person, the middle person, and the higher person. Mr. Speaker, let me tell you, in the village where I come from, we have got public servants. We have got employees who have toiled for years. Some of them are left with about five years to retire. They have got their own houses, which they have built through different schemes. You want to tell them to part with 1.5% of their pay, Mr. Speaker, to deposit in a scheme who nobody knows the intention about. Mr. Speaker, if you did just basic calculation, this 1.5% of an ordinary primary school teacher salary he will need not less than 200 years to be able to acquire a house. And yet this person is retiring in five years' time. So tell me, who is he saving for? Who is he buying this house for? Is his grandchildren, great-grandchildren, or who, Mr. Speaker? Nobody is coming up to, tell, to give us answers to those very basic questions. And yet, to that poor Kenyan worker in the village, that 1.5% which you are forcing him to fork out can mean a difference between starving to death or surviving. The speaker, that poor Kenyan worker in the village or even here in Nairobi depends on that 1.5% of his salary to put food on the table for his children, to buy a uniform for his, school, for his children, to pay school fees for his children, to actually pay all the bills that he incurs in his day-to-day -day life. The speaker. And therefore, and therefore, this is one of those schemes. In fact, I would want to equate it to a pyramid scheme. Mr. Speaker, this housing levy, or whatever they call it, is a perfect case of a pyramid scheme. And Kenyans must say no. They have already said no, resoundingly, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you can go on and on. You can go on and on. Look at the case of poor Kenyan women and girls, and including even boys who depend on the business of saloons, kinyozi, and what have you. What have they done to them? They have imposed an excise duty on human hair, wigs, false beards, eyebrows, eyelashes, artificial nails. Mr. Yes, Speaker, these, these people have a bone to pick with poor Kenyans. They don't want our women to be beautiful. They don't want our men to be welcomed, Mr. Speaker. They are basically strangulating every other poor Kenyan who is struggling. Mr. Speaker, as we speak, those saloons, those kinyozis employ hundreds of, and of thousands of Kenyans. A hundreds of thousands of Kenyans are employed and depend on those kinyozis, those saloons. If you come out and impose such taxes, you are essentially telling them to go back to and engage in other nefarious activities, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you cannot be on one hand condemning alcoholism and drugs and so on and so forth. And on the other hand, you are removing people from gainful employment and throwing them to the wilderness. What a contradiction is that, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this bill, this bill, as I conclude, <clears throat> the speaker, as we sit here today, 
and as we debate in this very magnificent chamber, Kenyans are watching out there. In fact, I have received since one hour ago not less than 200 messages from Kenyans who are watching us. Who are watching us. It is therefore incumbent upon us to choose where we want to stand. Do we want to stand on the right side of history or on the wrong side of history as a house? Because Kenyans are watching. Do you want to side with the oppressors who have brought this bill? Or do you want to stand with the poor Kenyans? The choice is ours. At the end of the day, it will be neither the issue of Kenya Kwanzaa or Azimio. It will be the issue of what position did a leader take at the hour of need? What stand did you take at the hour of need for Kenyans? They are watching. And it will not matter whether you vote yes or no and whether we, we, yes wins or not. What will matter is where are you standing as a leader of the people of Kenya. The speaker, in this country, we, have, we, are, used to, we are used to giving empty and lofty promises. And then we forget about them soon after elections. This time around, the mood I am seeing out there, and I am very often at home, Mr. Speaker, the mood out there is that this bill is a make or break point. This bill, this bill can actually spark a serious revolution in this country. This bill, I, can, I, I, want, to, I want to caution you, this bill can actually be the spark that will lead a revolution that will never be ended. And it's going to be a revolution of the proletariat, Mr. Speaker. It's going to be a revolution led by the poor hustlers, Mr. Speaker. Because they have had enough. They have had enough of lies. They have had enough of this chest stamping. They have had enough of this bravado. That hour of reckoning has now come. And therefore I want to say this. I want to say this. That even as we stand here to please our masters out there, our masters who are watching us, yes. you must understand that the bigger, greater masters are the people who voted us, not those who imposed us on these positions. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, this house cannot go down in history as a house which disregarded the plight of the people. This house must go down in history as a house which stood with the people at their hour of need. And with those very many Mr. Speaker, I oppose in totality. Thank you. Then the Nyoro. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for a chance to contribute in regards to the finance bill. And of course, I rise to support. And Mr. Speaker, I would want to take this opportunity to contextualize the debate we are having 